I always feel like I'm teaching to the test, which is what I'm actually doing in this playlist. We're going to talk about simple probability. This is Lesson 16b, and by no way is this what you could cover about probability. The GED doesn't go into this topic very deeply, okay? If you skipped or missed any of the previous videos, just click on the links in the description. And probability is a measure of how likely an event will occur. It's a chance from 0% to 100%. 0% means zero chance. There's no chance that it's going to happen. 100% means one. It will occur. It's certain to happen. So look at it this way. If you have 100% of a candy bar, that means you have one whole candy bar, right? So the probability is represented as a zero to a one and all the decimals and fractions in between a 0 and a 1, or 0% to 100%. And it can be shown as a ratio, a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage. As a ratio, we would use a colon. It's 1 to 4, a 1 out of 4 chance that it'll happen, if that's our chances. And as a fraction, that would be 1 fourth. As a decimal, 1 fourth would be 0.25. And as a percentage, it would be 25%. And there's two important numbers in probability. The top number is the amount of favorable outcomes, which are events we want to occur, that we want to happen, and the total possible outcomes or tries. Those are the trials, okay? The possibilities. To find the probability, and it's represented by a capital P, to find the probability of something happening, we write the ratio of favorable outcomes to possible outcomes. So P, the probability, is a ratio of the favorable outcomes that we want to happen over the total possible outcomes. So take a look at this bag. Let's pretend this is a black bag. There's four different color ribbons in this black bag. We can't see inside of it. The probability of picking a particular color without looking is one out of four. There's four ribbons of different color. If we want to pick an orange one, we've got a one out of four chance of picking it, don't we? That would be a one to four chance. It would be a 25% chance of picking an orange one our probability would be one orange ribbon out of four ribbons in the bag. It's a one-fourth chance or 0.25 chance. See? 25%. Now, if we wanted to try again, we'd have to put that orange ribbon back into the bag and then stick our hand back in and try to pick another color to try to see if we get orange again. And the way they write it is they write the event here, the thing we're trying to get. So it would be P and then orange in parentheses. It's the probability of the event would be one to four or one fourth. See? It's the favorable outcome over the total possible outcomes. All right? And we can reduce a probability to lower terms because they're fractions sometimes, right? So if it's a fraction, it can be reduced to lower terms. So let's say we have this black bag and we can't see inside of it, and there's 98 Lincoln Memorial pennies, and those are pennies that have the Lincoln Memorial on the back. See that? And let's say there's two leaf pennies. So minted from 1909 to 1956, there were these leaf pennies that had wheat leaves on the back. See them? There's one here and there's one here. They kind of curve. So the chance or probability of picking a leaf penny from the bag is 2 out of 100 or 2 one hundredths. And that can be reduced to 1 out of 50 chances or 1 50th of the times we try. 2 one hundredths is equal to 0 0.02 converted to a decimal, or 2% if we convert it to a percent. And there's 98 Lincoln Memorial pennies and two leaf pennies. That totals 100 pennies. So because two are leaf, we have two out of 100. See? Two one hundredths. The probability is two leaf pennies out of 100 possible pennies. That's probability. Now, sometimes the probability will be based on the results of an experiment. And we repeat the experiment a certain amount of times to see the outcome. And each time we try the experiment, it's called a trial. Experimental probability is the ratio of favorable outcomes to the total number of trials. How many times we tried, okay? So that's the ratio. Or as a fraction, it's the favorable outcomes over the total number of trials, all right? So here's the difference. The probability, just the simple probability, is what we want over the possibilities, okay? Experimental probability is what we want over how many times we tried to get it, all right? If we spin a spinner to try to land on an orange and we spin it four times, so I made this, and look, we can see that 50% of the time 
we'd have a chance to get an orange one, right? Because there's only four spaces, four sections, but two of them are orange. But for experimental probability, if we spin it four times, and I actually did, I put a tally mark for each color that I got. I only got one orange. I landed on pink twice and lime green once. That's our sample space. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes for an event. So we had a pink, an orange, or a green, and I only landed on orange once. That's one out of four times. That was a 25% result. So even though the probability was that I had a 50% chance of landing on an orange, I only landed on it as a result 25% of the time. Now I could do it again and get a different outcome because the chance of landing on orange is random. We might get orange three out of four spins next time, okay? Now take a look at this circle. Notice how many times a certain number occurs in the circle. We've got a one, and then we've got a one again. We've got a, only one, two, we got a three, and a three, we have one, four, but we have five, two times, see that? And there's eight sections. How many of the eight sections have an odd number in them? Six. There's six chances of landing on an odd number out of eight sections. So there's a six to eight chance of spinning to an odd number. We can reduce that to three to four, or three-fourths, or 75%. The chance of landing on a three, two of them have a three in them, so we have a 2 to 8 chance or a 1 to 4, 1 fourth or 25% chance of landing on a 3. See? So what you do is, if you want to find the probability, you look at how many sections there are and how many of that one there are out of those sections. See? There's two threes out of eight sections. So it's 2 to 8. See? And it can be reduced. So the event trying to find odd is what would go here. And we spin once for an odd number, we've got a 75% chance on landing on an odd number. But for experimental probability, let's say we spin it five times and we only landed on an odd number one time, well, then our result was 20% of the time we landed on an odd, okay? I know this can be confusing, but it doesn't really get very deep into it in the test. It might only have one or two problems for this, but if you can get them right, it's more of a chance of passing the test, right? Now, there's also theoretical probability. And theoretical probability is the probability that an event occurs when all the outcomes of the experiment are equally likely. And we covered that in Grade 7 Math, Chapter 13. Our next video is going to be independent and dependent probability. And that's not going to go very deep into the subject either, but it should be enough for, to help you pass the test. That's Lesson 16C. And... These are really helpful if you need them. They basically just cover what I covered, 8.1a 8 and 8.1b in 6th grade. And then chapters 12 in 7th grade talks about probability and experimental probability. Okay, You can go into chapter 13 if you want to know about theoretical. But even at the middle school level, it doesn't get into probability like you would in high school as much or... Uh, college, okay? If you were actually in those classes, I'm sure they would go deeper into the topic and explain it more. This is just real quick to help you for the test, okay? So I hope you have a great day, and I hope this was helpful and helped you understand this section. You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 187. If you have any trouble, just watch this video again and see if it makes any sense. There's only a few problems, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.